Good evening, everyone, and thank you for coming tonight. I call this April 9th, 2024 hybrid administrative meeting of the Board of County Commissioners to order. Um, before we have a, a moment of silence and the pledge as a point of privilege, uh, Commissioner Olivas wanted to make a statement. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I wanted to say two things. Uh, many of you probably learned that we had the, the tragic incident happen at the uh, Metropolitan Detention Center, Center today, and I uh, just want to, you know, send my, my thoughts and uh, condolences to the, to the family and, and thinking about all of our employees out there. Uh, but uh, I, in a prepared statement that, that I've taken some time to write, I wanted to say that uh, in a time when it seems that we can't agree on much of anything um, nationally, worldwide, I'd like to ask that we take this moment of silence to remember that we are all one people. Regardless of race, religion, or political affiliation, Father Time knows no difference. Uh, it is with tremendous sadness that we see brothers and sisters across our Mother Earth tearing each other apart with violence to harm one another in the name of perceived differences. In this moment of silence, I will be thinking of the women and children in Gaza, wondering where their next meal will come from or if they will wake up the next morning. The acts that preceded the war in Gaza were cowardly and horrific acts perpetrated by people on people. I ask that we think about when is enough enough? When suffering and death are avenged with suffering and death, how will we survive as a people on our planet Earth? From my humble position, uh, I would call for an immediate ceasefire and peace in the region now. Please join me in a moment of silence. Please stand. To the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, item three on the agenda is announcements uh, and changes to the agenda. Um, Madam County Manager has none, but but I have one, and, and I would like to, to make a statement to you all. As, as many of you know, I've been working closely with Sheriff Allen and DCM Perez on the proposal for a reorganization um, to move our dispatch 911 center under BCSO. The purpose of this is an organizational proposal with the intent of creating important training opportunities and incorporating the new technology that has been brought on by BCSO, which will help us with closest to call, improving response time and improving public safety. Um, it is a fact that 80% of the calls that go through disp dispatch, excuse me, go to BCSO, but that does not diminish the 20% that are fire, nor does it dis uh, um, diminish the importance of our dispatch unit, and I wanted to make that clear. Um, it's also a fact that Bernalillo County Commission has heard from many of our staff, from our AFSCME union, from BCSO, and from FIRE on this issue. So I want all of the stakers, stakeholders to know that I hear you, we hear you, and I will be moving the um, agenda item under our budget approval item 8D2 from tonight's agenda, and we will not be considering that reorganization at this time. I do want to say to you all, though, that I, I attended a public meeting on public safety last Wednesday. It was in the South Valley. The sheriff was there. A woman gave a very important message to us all, and that was, um, you know, they, they talk about the, the difficulty we're having with public safety, and um, she said, we need to make sure that we send the first responders, the correct first responders, whether that's the crisis intervention team or ACS, when we have a person in, in mental crisis. And we know that that is our goal, that is your goal, and that is the sheriff's office goal. Um, I'm also listening to those voices. And so I hope that we can all work together with our policy leaders, with our staff, and with our community 
to, to work toward a, a good, um, improved effort um, because public safety is the number one priority in our community. And, and I hope that you will work with me on that. So I will be removing that from the agenda. And, and I'm working with um, Commissioner Benson. We've been talking about it, working with uh, DCM Pettis and the Sheriff's Office to that end. So thank you for that, that opportunity to, to speak to you tonight on that. So. And Madam Chair, if we can have a uh, vote on that change. Yes. And so the uh, vote is approval of the agenda with item 8, uh, uh, D2, to be removed. And that's been seconded by Commissioner Barboa. All those in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. Aye. And that passes. Thank you. We move on to item 4, proclamations. Um, the first one is a Cesar Chavez Dolores Huerta celebration presentation sponsored by Chair Barboa and myself. Um, so I will start. Thank you, Madam Chair. Both um, Madam Chair and I are um, fangirls of Dolores Huerta and um, Cesar Chavez probably as much as most of our community is. Um, but it's an honor to read this um, proclamation in honor of their of their work. So, whereas Cesar Chavez, Cesar Estrada Chavez was born on March 31st, 1927, near Yuma, Arizona, and became one of the most influential Latino American activists and civil and workers' rights in our nation's history, bringing justice to tens of thousands of farm workers. And Dolores Huerta, born on April 10th, 1930, is still working to bring justice to millions of people around the country and has become the most influential advocate of civil and workers' rights today. And whereas farm workers at the time were subjected to inhumane treatment, working in hazardous, toxic, and unhealthy conditions without toilets or drinking water, exploited through low wages and excluded from union representation and Whereas Cesar Chavez and Dolores Huerta dedicated themselves to the cause of justice and representation for farm workers, co-founding the National Farm Workers Association Union in 1962, directing the Community Services or Service Organization, and leading historic boycotts, marches, and strikes throughout the nation, immortalizing the movement through the slogan of Si Se Puede. Yes, we can. And whereas... Their guidance and courage have served as an inspiration for social justice across the country, posthumously earning Cesar Chavez the Presidential Medal of Freedom and seeing countless streets, parks, and schools named after him. Dolores Huerta was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2012 and has been honored with many accolades. Now, therefore, be it resolved, that the Bernalillo County Board of Commission does hereby honor and recognize April 9th, 2024 as Cesar Chavez and Dolores Huerta Day. And the board encourages all Bernalillo County residents to serve the community in his name and live by his vision for social, economic, environmental justice through, through nonviolence. Done this ninth day of April, 2024, Bernalillo County, state of New Mexico. And I would like to ask uh, Linda Garcia Benavides, Representative Linda Garcia. Representative. Oh, sorry. <laughs> to come up to say a few words and to accept oh. our um, proclamation. <laughs> they have this shared vision of what they want for people to be treated all the same. And we should continue to keep fighting for that. She turn, will turn 94 
tomorrow. And she will be here for this event this year. The only difference is, uh, you know, she does the Marcha de Justicia. And she marches with that every single year. And she plans to be here this weekend. So we want to thank you so very much. I have a few of the committee members here with us that have come to accept this award from you. And I want to thank each and every one of you from the bottom of our hearts for recognizing her for recognizing Sisan and for recognizing us as an organization that does this work. This is our 31st annual celebration. <laughs> and we do this all as volunteers, and we're the only one in the nation that does this celebration. And we're the only one in the nation that has the two avenidas that intersect with each other, Avenida de Lourdes Huerta, Avenida Cesar Chavez. So it just means so very much to all of us. I thank each and every one of you for this recognition. Si se puede, si and se I hope puede. that you guys will be there on Saturday. We'll be there on Saturday. Please come up and accept the proclamation. Item B, uh, Commissioner Benson. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I understand we have some uh, amateur radio practitioners here. If you can, come on up to the podium. I've got a uh, statement to read, and I'd like to uh, hear from you in just a minute. But... Uh, the, board of, the Bernalillo County Board of Commissioners, where, whereas it was on this day in 1925 that the International Amateur Radio Union was formed in Paris with American Radio Relay League co-founder Hiram Percy Maxim as its first president, whereas the American Radio Relay League was founded in 1914 by Hiram Percy Maxim and is a non-commercial organization of radio amateurs and is the National Association for Amateur Radio in the USA representing over 170,000 FCC licensed amateurs. And whereas amateur radio operators are celebrating over a century of broadcasting the miracle of human voice over the airwaves. And amateur radio is a valuable volunteer emergency communication service and public resource. And whereas amateur radio has continued to build bridges between people, societies, and countries through the sharing of ideas and the fostering of friendships. And whereas amateur radio operators have provided countless hours of community service to other local organizations throughout these decades. And whereas the county acknowledges the indispensable service provided by amateur radio operators, especially the Bernalillo County Amateur Radio Emergency Services, BCARES, their team to our many emergency response organizations, including Bernalillo County Emergency Management. And whereas these services are provided wholly uncompensated and fill a need in emergency communications at a time when other systems may not work. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Burnley Ale County Board of Commissioners hereby proclaims April 18th, 2024, World Amateur Radio Day, done this ninth day of April 2024 in Burnley Ale County, State of New Mexico, signed by your full Board of Commissioners. And I just want to say, for, for those in the audience, Amateur only means that they don't get paid for it. And that's it. <laughs> In terms of the professionalism, the expertise, it's amazing. A friend of mine is a ham op, a ham radio operator, and when when stuff starts falling apart in terms of order and global order and communications, it's these guys that you're glad you have. So. Thank you, and I've got a plaque for you. We'd like to take a picture, but please um, 
like to hear from you. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Christopher Petroff. Uh, my amateur radio call sign is W5CBP, Whiskey 5, Charlie Bravo Papa. I'm the district emergency coordinator for the uh, ARRL uh, organization that is ARIES, Amateur Radio Emergency Service. Our uh, sole customer uh, of, of this group, the sole customer is the Office of Emergency Management of Bernalillo County. And I guess they could loan us out to whoever they want. Uh, that's fine. Uh, we all participate uh, in drills and uh, ordinary communication uh, nets on a daily basis. In the morning, there's a net that covers all, of New all points of New Mexico. In the afternoon, at noon, there's a net that covers all of the Western United States. And then in the afternoon at, uh, at uh, 7 o'clock local time, there's another net that is exclusively for handling traffic into and out of the state of New Mexico to the, to the rest of the world. But, uh, and we're real happy to receive this recognition. Recognition. I want to recognize the professional emergency communicators over here on this side. Uh, we don't we don't dispatch we don't dispatch fire trucks or cop cars or ambulances or anything like that. We move traffic, and we can provide the Office of Emergency Management with an end product that looks exactly like an email, or we can fill in any communication link where there's a void. We can transmit text image, telemetry, uh, we've, we've all got that, we've got that pretty well dialed in. And we're very appreciative, appreciative of uh, the equipment that the county has installed at the Office of Emergency Management that we, where we can go and uh, do our exercises and drills and include the rest of the amateur radio community. Which, by the way, I just want to make uh, mention that there are 3,145 licensed amateur radio operators in Bernalillo County alone. And the population of amateur radio operators in the state of New Mexico is 6,233. So probably half, close to half, of all radio amateurs in the state of New Mexico reside in the county of Bernalillo. But we, we network sun up, noon, sundown, we're on the air in an organized fashion with nets. And then we do a lot of hobby stuff. You know, we do telegraphy and, and, a, and a lot of very nerdish stuff. <laughs> but, but, but we like it. And uh, I'd like to say that we've assembled a really good group here. Uh, one, two, three of whom are engineers. My colleague here, retired fireman. I'm a re retired division chief of emergency medical services from Bernalillo County Fire Department. I retired in 2014. I'd like to say to the county manager that, in my opinion, the fire department, the sheriff's department, and, uh, and ambulance have come a light year in the nine years that I've been retired. Uh, I, I advocated to the public regulatory commission uh, for the rescue service of Bernalillo County Fire Department to become an ambulance service, to get a PRC certificate, and to be able to be compensated for the transport of, uh, of patients when there's uh, a void in ambulance service, which nine years ago was so prevalent it was maddening. <clears throat> Sometimes in the East Mountains we'd have to wait half an hour, 40 minutes for an ambulance to show up. It was crazy. So I just think that all of you for the county have done an excellent job. We appreciate you. We appreciate the opportunity to serve you and to serve the Office of Emergency Management. And, uh, you know, uh, Christmas is coming, and we got a list. <laughs> Come on up and get your first present right here. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you so much.
I learned a lot from you tonight. Thank you. I'm going to have to scooch in. Okay. I'm glad you like each other. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Proclamation 4C, Commissioner Casada. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, tonight we have something really special. Um, you know, uh, I'm always excited about the good news coming out of the South Valley. Uh, it's something that has always been kind of near and dear to my heart about, you know, what, what our programs do and, and kids getting involved in stuff. And through that story, you know, we have a really great, great, resolution that we're going to move forward, um, an acknowledgement we're going to move forward today. Uh, and I have Treasurer uh, uh, Beers here that uh, also uh, wants to help me uh, recognize this individual for a major achievement, something that not only the South Valley should be proud of, but the whole state of New Mexico should be extremely proud of this young lady. Um, so this is about... Um, uh, but let me just read the, uh, the acknowledgement, and then we'll go from there, all right? So, uh, Stephanie, if you'd like to stand up to uh, uh, the podium there, um, that would be awesome, all right? So, I didn't even say nothing, and they know who you are, so that's how awesome that is. So, uh, this acknowledgement, the Berlio County Board of Commissioners does hereby acknowledge Stephanie Jaramillo, Acknowledging Stephanie Golden Girl Jaramillo, a South Valley native, for being inducted into the International Women's uh, Boxing Hall of Fame. <laughs> and <laughs> acknowledging that she first fought as an amateur when she was 14 years old, and during this stage in her boxing career, she had over 40 national and international amateur bouts where she won numerous titles and medals. And acknowledging that Stephanie made her pro debut in 2022 and completed in seven professional bouts during her point of her career and acknowledging that Stephanie Jaramillo retired as a pro at the age of 21 and remains active in boxing management, promotion, and training. And acknowledging Stephanie's induction to the Amateur Athletics World Hall of Fame Museum for Outstanding Boxing Achievement. And acknowledging her work in charitable and school events where she provides inspiration and encouragement giving back to her community. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Bernalillo County Board of Commissioners celebrates the accomplishments and contributions of Stephanie Jaramillo done this ninth day of April 2024 in Bernalillo County, State of New Mexico, presented by all the county commissioners. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Now, Madam Treasurer. I'm handing it over to you. Uh, it's the button. There you go. There you go. Oh, there we go. You're good. Stephanie, it's so good to see you today. Thank you. <clears throat> to all to whom these presents shall come, greetings. Know ye that reposing special trust and confidence in the integrity, ability, and discretion of Stephanie Jaramillo, I do appoint you guardian of the treasury for devoted service to the welfare and progress of Bernalillo County. Wow. Thank, Thank you, you, Madam. Wow. And I will protect you. Thank <laughs> you. 
You're welcome. We're waiting on uh, Treasurer, Madam Treasurer. What are you, what are you doing? And then we're just going to take some photos. Thank you. Congratulations, Stephanie. Our next proclamation is uh, Commissioner Benson. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is for uh, acknowledgement of National Public Safety Telecommunications Week. I know we have some representatives here if you care to take the podium as well. And before I read this acknowledgement, I do want to thank Madam Chair for, um, for her comments earlier and, and her commitment to public safety and uh, an openness to dialogue and communication, as well as uh, Sheriff Allen, um, uh, always being available for uh, phone calls, as well as Chief Perez, same thing. And um, yeah, we're, we're an amazing team, and I uh, just want to thank everybody in that part. Acknowledgement. The Bernalillo County Board of Commissioners does hereby acknowledge public, National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week. April 14th through the 20th, 2024. Emergency communications is the vital link between the community and fire and rescue, police officers, and emergency medical services, ensuring the quick response of emergency personnel to protect the public and ensuring emergency personnel receive continuing and correct information to maintain their safety. Effective communications with the public have remained even more critical now as systems become more technical with an increase of service calls yearly. Started by the Contra Costa County Sheriff's Office in California in 1981, National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week is celebrated during the second week of April to honor public safety telecommunications personnel nationwide. The Bernalillo County Emergency Communications Department and its 911 operators exhibit compassion, understanding, and professionalism in each interaction with the public, leading to the apprehension of criminals, suppression of fires, and treatment of patients. During these trying times, the safety of our emergency responders is especially dependent upon the accuracy of information obtained from calls to our emergency communicators to protect law enforcement officers, firefighters, and paramedics responding to possible encounters with service calls that contain a need for seeing safety. The Board of County Commissioners thus acknowledges April 14th through the 20th, 2024 as National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week and extends gratitude on behalf of the community for the dedication of the Bernalillo County Emergency Communications Department staff. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. And Mr. Thompson, I hope you have some words, but before you do, I just wanna say, um, if anybody's ever called 911, it's a, it's a scary time typically. And these are, the, these are some of the folks that answer. Um, I've, I've had the opportunity on multiple occasions actually to tour the facility and sit down on some of those phone calls and I was about to have a heart attack in each phone call. And these professionals handle each one and I'm looking at them and they're not about to have a heart attack. They're they're calm, they're saying they're de-escalating violence, they're they're calming loved ones who are dealing with uh, with death in the present moment and they're able to I don't know how they do it, they take it all in. And then, and then right after that phone call, they pick up the next phone call, and it's right like that. And you also do the, uh, you also take calls from APD when they are overwhelmed. Uh, you guys are amazing, so thank you. Madam Chair, Commissioner Benson, members of the commission, Lee Thompson, Emergency Communications Director. Uh, I'll just keep my words short. 
uh, I have a great team of professionals behind me. And honestly, they deserve all the credit. I'm just humbled and honored and blessed to lead these individuals. And on that note, we'll come up and shake some hands and grab a proclamation and take a picture. So thank you for your time. So now we move on to public comment and communications. Um, each person will have two minutes and you will be alerted about your remaining time. When your name is called, please make your way to the podium if you are speaking in person. Before making your statements, please state your name for the record. To maintain order, to maintain order and decorum and in the spirit of professionalism and respect for everyone, we ask you that you do stick to your two minutes. Um, Julianne, I think we have uh, 13 people, two online, 11 in person, and she will begin by reading the names. Thank you, Madam Chair. So it's 11 total with two participating online, and we will start with Mr. Don Schrader, followed by Isidoro Vigil, followed by Gallen Lowry. I was terribly addicted as a kid and in my 20s to ice cream, cake, cookies, candy. One reason I have no teeth now. My mother was also terribly addicted to damn sugar. She ballooned from 98 pounds at 26 to 270 pounds in her 50s. When I saw the hell my mother suffered, I stopped the ice cream, cake, cookies, candy over 40 years ago. My mother had two retina detachment surgeries on her eyes. I had surgery on both my retinas. My mother and I could have gone blind because sugar. Sugar is as addictive as heroin. Sugar is far more addictive than cocaine. Feeding kids sugar crap is child abuse. Sugar causes or worsens over 50 conditions, cancer, allergies, heart disease, all infections, fat bodies, arthritis, alcoholism, diabetes, insomnia, depression, high blood pressure, mental illness. I eat no artificial sweeteners. My sweets are lots of fresh, whole fruit, not fruit juice. I eat raw plant foods. I eat healthier than most millionaires. I live well on less than the U.S. poverty level. Thank you, Mr. Schrader. Isadora V. Hill, Gellin Lowry, Adam Harper. Good evening, Madam Chair, fellow commissioners. My name is Isidoro V. Hill. I am an employee of Emergency Communications, a local member of AFSCME 2260, and a resident of this community. I'll be honest, I was prepared to be giving a completely different speech this evening. But thankfully, our concerns and voices were heard, they were acknowledged and acted upon prior to this meeting. So thank you. Now I'm able to speak on a more joyous matter 
the proclamation and acknowledgement of the staff members of emergency communications by this commission. In my brief time working for emergency communications here at Bellevue County, we have been acknowledged twice by this commission, which is a lot more than I can say I got in my previous county that I worked for. So again, thank you. As many of you are aware, we are usually an afterthought or not a thought at all until so someone calls 911 or needs emergency services. We are the voices heard in times of need, but rarely seen. I extend our gratitude for not only hearing us, but seeing us as telecommunicated weak approaches. I'd like to also extend my deepest appreciation and gratitude to the administration staff of BCEC and my fellow coworkers in attendance, and especially to those who couldn't be here because they are currently doing the job that we've been recognized for. Your encouragement, reassurance, camaraderie, and ability to get calm in the chaos has inspired and sustained me through difficult times and challenges. We all face this job. Thank you for making this a safer place for me and my family to live, and for all the amazing work you do, especially those who can't be here right now. In closing, I'll leave with a simple reminder of what we do. Tell us your worst, we'll send you our best. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Beal. So I'm Galen Locri. Uh, but yeah, just wanted to start off and say thank you, Madam Chair, Commissioners. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to, to hear public comment today, in particular for the Netherwood Park resolution. I have been working on this project personally for three years. I'm a resident of Netherwood Park, have been a resident of Netherwood Park or adjacent neighborhoods for 35 plus years, went to Albuquerque High, have a four-year-old and a six-year-old kiddo. So this is a near and dear issue for me. Um, the reason why I think we're here today is because over the past three years, I've really sought out this discussion. So I really appreciate you taking the time to hear these comments. Three years of work. Three years of following benchmarks set forth by the Neighborhood Association, Albuquerque City Parks and Rec Department, and I've tried to meet all of those, and it's come to this point today to really push it forward. So I'm here today to request that you vote in favor of the amendment to this Netherwood Park resolution because I think that really addresses the issues that have come up with communication as well as programming and processing issues that have come up. And then ultimately, I request that you vote in favor of the full resolution because I do believe that is research-backed action to help improve inclusivity in the county as well as Albuquerque. So thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Adam Harper, followed by Rhiannon Samuel, followed by Sandra Ortsman. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the commission. My name is Adam Harper. I am the president of RIA, which is the Renewable Energy Industry Association of New Mexico, as well as the CEO and founder of OE Solar, a local uh, commercial solar developer and uh, EPC. I want to spend my time today stating RIA's support for the motion to approve the Improvement Special Assessment Program, or also known as CPACE. Additionally, I want to draw your attention to a pivotal opportunity that lies before us in the potential implementation of the CPACE program in our county. As you deliberate on this decision, it's imperative to dive deeper into the multifaceted benefits that this program can bring to our communities. The CPACE program represents more than just a financial tool for property improvement. It serves as a catalyst for transformation. In our county, we often en encounter projects that pose immense potential to rejuvenate our neighborhoods and bolster economic activity, yet remain dormant due to funding limitations. CPACE offers a solution to this challenge by providing the necessar necessary financing resource to kickstart these projects, hereby revitalizing underserved areas and breathing new life into abandoned or underutilized properties. Beyond the economic impact, CP 
pace holds the promise of enhancing our community's resiliency in the face of involving 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 challenges. With our infrastructure aging and climate change poised to increase threats, it is paramount that we invest in projects that fortify our resiliency and sustainability. By leveraging CPACE funding for critical resiliency initiatives, we can not only bolster our community's ability to withdraw future adverse effects Thank of you. climate change as well as harden our grid. Thank, Thank you, you sir. for your time. Rhiannon Samuel, followed by Sandra Ortsman, followed by Rudolph Serrano. Hello, Madam Chair and members of the Commission. My name is Rhiannon Samuel, and I'm the Executive Director for NAOP New Mexico. NAOP supports the program that Mr. Harper was just talking about. Um, he called it CPACE, and what that stands for is the Commercial Property Assessed Clean Energy. NAOP was proud to collaborate with the Renewable Energy Industries Association, the Independent Bankers Association, and the County's Treasure, County Treasurer's Association during the 2023 legislative session. Together, we were able to successfully advocate for changes to the state statute, enabling counties like Bernalillo County to adopt more functional CPACE program. This financing is a tool for, that provides property owners with affordable financing for vital improvements such as energy efficiency and renewable energy. By working hand in hand with key stakeholders, we've demonstrated our commitment to driving positive change, fostering economic development and advancing sustainable or sustainability initiatives in our communities. This resolution offers a multitude of benefits, including the creation of local job opportunities, reduction of utility bills through clean energy enhancements, and the elimination of barriers posed by upfront cash um, requirements for property improvements. Moreover, the option for repayment over an extended period um, aligned with the useful life of enhancements ensures the financial burden is manageable and equitable. In light of these significant benefits and the positive impact that this program will have on the county's economic development and sustainability efforts, we urge the commissioners to vote for this vital program. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Samuel. Hello, commissioners, Madam Chair. My name is Sandra Ortsman. I am uh, live in District 2, which is where Netherwood Park is. And I wanna thank you, Commissioner Quesada, for your resolution in support of a playground for Netherwood Park. And I wanna thank you, Commissioner Barboa, for all you do for our district. I'm a strong supporter of the playground in Netherwood Park. I'm a mom of two, age eight today and age 10. Um, and I'm also a community planner. Playgrounds, as you know, serve multitude of uh, multiple positive purposes. They increase health, they increase co community cohesion, and they increase safety as we have more eyes on the park. It was not okay that the governor vetoed funds earmarked to build that playground or another in the city if Netherwood didn't pursue it, based on the request of a close friend who lives on the park. Our neighborhood has turned. There are new families with children on every block, and I have personally spoken with dozens who want a playground. I hope that you can also recommend additional funds um, in the resolution for a community engagement process that would fund a park utilization survey to identify the most ideal space in the park, as well as the creation of three renderings to give neighbors an opportunity to weigh in on which design features they like the most. And finally, a facilitator who can facilitate a couple of public input meetings. Um, but I really wanna thank you for making sure that this stays on the radar and supporting neighbors. And then finally, um, unrelated, I'd like to express my hope that you'll also support the BIPOC Economic Development Services Award for the Partnership for Community Action. They do wonderful, much needed work in our community. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Madam Chair, all commissioners, I want to thank Mr. Benton for uh, Commissioner Benson for his support in the, in the program of bringing inclusion blind deaf up. I uh, still going up. 25 years ago, I came to these chambers when they were next door, and I told you, don't get involved in the wars in the Middle East because we're going to bankrupt. And you guys didn't listen, and we bankrupt, and they're both 
richer. Twice, uh, you need three dollars to buy now a dinner. But uh, I told you too. You know, we can fall into communism, fall into socialism, or fall into a, a classical period state. We have the same opportunity, the same conversation again today, and uh, we can fall into arts and, uh, and, and music. And I've been trying to sell this to the buildings around, and they say, well, use the commissioner's guinea pigs first, so let us know after. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. But I told them too, you know, if you put classical music outside your buildings, the homeless won't sleep outside. And now we have our full first building singing classical music. So the classical period is coming with or without you. Um, the other things that we're doing, uh, I'm gonna be doing uh, helping the homeless. You're gonna hear a lot of me helping the homeless in the next uh, episodes. I'm gonna teach you what the streets are like so your decisions are based on reality. And they're gonna be raw, you know me. <laughs> I'll make it raw so it gets through. And uh, also gonna be some episodes of uh, Breaking Good. We have $240 million uh, dollars coming from Breaking Bad, and I got better stories. You know, so today was boxing, so remind me to, uh, to tell you the story of how why Frescas is still alive. I have to forgive his life uh, when he stole uh, Blackie's uh, connectors back in the 80s. So it's stories like that, you know, that, that are real, and uh, they're our city, are coming. Thank you, sir. Have a great night. We'll now move to, uh, to the remote participants, starting with Amy Miller, followed by David Vogel. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, yes. go ahead. Yeah, uh, good evening, Madam Chair, members of the commission. Uh, I emailed you earlier today, urging you to vote no on Commissioner Quesada's resolution regarding Netherwood Park. I will say that I have lived, my husband and I have lived in the neighborhood for over 20 years. We raised our two wonderful children here. And my neighborhood is in a situation today that is really reflective of a lack of process, a lack of communications, and quite frankly, a lack of leadership. Add that to recent media coverage that has not provided all perspectives, that has actually had some serious inaccuracies and didn't include a lot of detail. And now the voices and actions in my neighborhood are very divisive and it's very unfortunate. We had an annual meeting in the neighborhood a few weeks ago where people lack civility a lot regarding this issue I had suggested that maybe we needed to stop emailing, having email campaigns, calling politicians, calling the media. Clearly, I haven't made much progress on that, but I'm hoping that if we can calm this situation down, we can get people into a room talking with each other instead of using social media, media, emails, and other venues and really get together as a neighborhood and figure out what our priorities are, what we can agree upon. I think there's been a lot of accusations, a lot of hurt feelings, and I am hoping that we move past this. So I'm asking you to not get involved in this issue. Our neighborhood needs to straighten up its own house, its internal act. Thank you. And then we can move forward on something. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. David Vogel. Mr. Vogel, if you can unmute yourself and begin your comments. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. thank you. Madam Chair uh, and Commissioners, my name is David Vogel. I've lived in uh, Albuquerque for about 50 years. I'd like to just comment briefly on the comprehensive plan. Um, and compliment the commission as well as the staff on what's to me as a professional planner looks like an extraordinarily far-sighted and in-depth document. Uh, congratulations to the staff, particularly Elvira Lopez, who has led this effort. It's, a, it's an outstanding piece of work. Perhaps the county could uh, offer to deploy 
some of its own staff to the city to help them address some of the water issues that are needing to be addressed in the combined thinking between the city and the county. The idea of a shared vision, which is being proposed, is a good place to start and perhaps include the water authority in the sharing of that vision along with the city and the county. So the, um, I just want to reinforce uh, the need for tying together land use and water use planning, which at this point is still bifurcated. So, and lastly, I would like to encourage the commission to review the Santa Lina proposal and the 10-year validity review and assessment that's called for after a 10-year proposal is on the table. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Mr. Vogel. We also have Mr. Dr. Geraldo Cionello, who signed up to participate via Zoom. However, I don't see him online, so that will conclude public comment. Thank you, Julia. Okay, thank you. We move on to item six, approval of the consent agenda. Madam Clerk, can you please provide resolution numbers for items 6A, I, K, L, and M? Yes, ma'am. 6A is AR 2024-38. 6I is AR 2024-39. K is AR 2024-40. L is AR 2024-41. M is FR 2024-42. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The consent agenda has been published and made available to the public. Therefore, I move approval of the consent agenda. Do I have a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 And that a privilege, if I may. Uh, yes, Commissioner Barbo. I, think I just wanted to say I have two appointments that are on. I want to recognize Juanita Monslove and um, Pat, Dr. Patrick Hibbard for their volunteer, and also recognize that we have somebody. It's on the consent agenda, but I'm here from Peace Par Partnership for Community Action. And excited that we're here. Just to, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. And. Also, I'd like to thank all of all of those who have volunteered to serve on our boards, and in particular, uh, Janet Sayers, who I am appointing to the Library Advisory Board. Thank you very much for your work in, in uh, New Mexico Historical Society, and I know that you'll do a, a good job for our uh, joint albuquerque Burlingame County Library System. Commissioner Benson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just also want to thank uh, Mr. Chris Welch for uh, offering to serve on the Water Protection Advisory Board and um, your commitment to our community, as well as Kim Jackson, um, an amazing artist, uh, continuing her reappointment on the arts board. Uh, both amazing individuals. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we move on to item seven, adoption of ordinances amendment to the county code, economic development. Mr. Gonzalez. Madam Chair uh, and members of the commission, uh, my name is Marcos Gonzalez, executive development officer for Bernalillo County. And the economic development staff requests accepting publication of the notice of intent to adopt an ordinance enacting an improvement special assessment program, ISAP, or what was previously called the CEASE program. I'll stand for any questions. Any questions? Commissioner Benson. Madam Chair, thank you. I just uh, want to encourage my colleagues to vote in favor of this. It's, uh, um, it's just a brilliant uh, move in terms of uh, activating uh, economic development as well as environmental sustainability. It's kind of a, uh, one of those unicorns. And uh, thank you, um, Mr. Gonzalez, for all your hard work bringing this together and your expertise in the field. And uh, yeah, I support this. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Olivas. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just had a, a quick question for you, Director. Can uh, can residents and businesses in the city of Albuquerque use this program since it is a, a county ordinance or is this just applied to unincorporated? Madam Chair and Commissioner Olivia, so currently the program is only for commercial entities, but it can be used throughout Bernalillo County and other incorporated um, areas. So the city of Albuquerque to Harris, the village of, of Los Ranchos. Great. Items like that. Thank you. Madam I would just like to point out, Madam Chair, it was actually a lot of work with the county attorney's office and 
and Madam Treasurer as well, did a lot of work on this over the years to get us to this point. So I'm thankful for the county uh, coming together on this. Commissioner Casada. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, the CPACE was one of the first things that I brought forward uh, when I became a commissioner. And uh, we, we had uh, some issues that we needed to change at the state level. Uh, I know our, our great attorney uh, helped me uh, uh, kind of navigate that, and I'm glad it's full circle because I think what's more important now is that, um, you know, for me, the driving force was, you know, this is where the birthplace of solar energy uh, was from, but yet we weren't number one in solar energy. We were way behind the eight ball when it came to implementing solar energy. And now with uh, the Maxion plant coming, uh, you know, they're going to be manufacturing solar. So I think this full circle comes at a good time. And so I, I totally 100% um, support it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioner Benson, would you like to make a motion to approve? Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, I so move. Okay. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Yes. Aye. And that passed. Thank you, Mr. Thank Gonzalez. You. Okay, item eight, adoption of resolutions. Madam Clerk, when you please provide resolution numbers for the following items. Um, Yes, ma'am. 8A is 2024-43. 8B is AR 2024-44. C is AR 2024-45. That's it. Thank you, Madam Clerk. So we move on to item A, um, county manager selection process. And... Um, I need to speak to this. This is uh, an extremely important issue, as we all know. And um, this resolution before you is, I want to um, make some statements about it because I, I feel that it is, it needs to be talked about in terms of the chronology. As you all know, our um, wonderful county manager, Julie Morgus Baca, gave her notice of intent to retire at the end of February. Um, after that, the leadership, uh, Commissioner Olivas and I um, talked about this and talked about the importance of trying to move forward with consensus and, and moving this commission forward with that selection. So we requested from the commission in uh, via email your input on the process, on skills and abilities that we hope that you would include in this process, and we received those back. Um, I'm, I'm, it's important to say that many of those um, ideas are incorporated in this resolution that's before us here and I want to go through some of those that we needed an open and inclusive process that we need to do a national search which I included in here that we needed a search committee although that there was a difference of opinion on the Commission that maybe we needed to hire an outdoor out, out outside firm um, the proposal before us is a local group or committee, which I feel is really important after we do a national search, that we br bring in local community leaders um, to vet those applications and really bring it home to the intricacies of what Bernalillo County needs here at home. And to that end, the, the list is included here, um, led up by uh, Mr. Juan V. Hill, our fo a former county manager. It is a bipartisan group of people with two former county commissioners. It includes um, former solution, uh, sorry, Workforce Solutions Cabinet Deputy Secretary and former uh, APS Board Chair Yolanda Cordova Montoya and also a, a person with experience with behavioral health, which is, as we know, very important to the county in Venice Ceballos, Program Operations Director from the Community for Health Worker initiatives at UNM. It includes public meetings. These are also things that were asked for by the Commission. And it includes an online, online stakeholder survey, which was specifically requested in a, in a previous um, resolution that we did defer because we felt that the outside search committee was uh, talking with our um, purchasing staff and legal staff that that was a in my mind, going to take too long. It was going to be expensive, and replacing that with a local search committee is what I'm recommending in this. I still think that follows the intent. So in mid-March, we did some um, 
research on be best practices with the ICMA, International City County Managers Association. I reached out to the uh, New Mexico counties, um, spoke with uh, our sitting county manager and our legal department. And so it brings us to where we are today. And so I believe that this resolution before you in moving forward with the selection process is a compromise resolution. Um, and I urge your support. So I move approval of this resolution. Do I have a second? second. It's been moved and seconded. Madam so Chair. I'll open for discussion. Commissioner Quesada. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, uh, I do appreciate uh, the effort moving forward. Um, I, I have uh, noticed that some of the ideas that uh, uh, my office put forward were implemented, which uh, makes this very uh, I'm happy uh, that uh, that that was listened to. Uh, the only thing is, I would move for a friendly amendment to allow each uh, commissioner to appoint his own person to that committee uh, or that panel, uh, because I feel that if you silence my uh, participation in that effort, then you're dis enfranchising over 100,000 voters who voted for me and for Commissioner Benson uh, that we haven't had a say so on who sits on that. Uh, we also know very, very uh, qualified people from this community that we feel should be a part of that process. And for, and for this commission to do that on their own without even consulting other commissioners makes it look like this isn't really a commission's idea moving forward. It's, it looks more like a, a couple, two, three commissioners uh, putting a process together without really being uh, attentive, not only to uh, my district, but I, I, I also would have to say uh, Commissioner Benson's district. I, I'll ask Commissioner Benson, maybe I'm speaking out of term here. Did you have a say so in who was uh, appointed? No, I did not. Would you like to have that, sir? I would. So that would be my friendly amendment to that, uh, to change that structure. And other than that, I think that doing something local is is always preferable to me because I believe we can govern ourselves. And so I agree with that. But you have to give the voice to the people who voted me in, and you have to give a voice to the people who voted Commissioner Benson in. I have a comment from Commissioner Olivas and then Commissioner Barboa. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I wanted to point out that I think uh, both of those districts are, are quite well represented on this uh, in this proposal. Uh, former Commissioner Cummins is, uh, you know, just incredible individual, great experience here at the county, and and uh, you know, a businessman in in his own right. Uh, lives in in District Four, and uh, of course, former Board President Montoya Cordova is, uh, you know, esteemed two-term APS Board member from the South Valley uh, that, that lives in District 2. Um, in fact, I, as, I, as I'm thinking about it, um, I'm actually not sure that, that my district is geographically represented in this group um, because just thinking of, of who lives where and what I know, uh, I, I don't actually believe my district's represented. But I'm okay with that because the individuals that are on this, uh, in this resolution, on this proposed search committee, are just, in my opinion, the, the best and most qualified, most competent to get this done. That's what this is about. This is not about a, a popularity contest. This is not about um, a, a political game of, of individuals appointing their, their, their friends and their, their political uh, colleagues. This is about making sure that we have people that understand this extremely important job. And I want to be very clear because I've, I've seen some statements in the media. This is not the mayor of Bernalillo County. Uh, the mayor is a very different role. The mayor hires the CAO of the city of Albuquerque. That's what county manager Marcus Baca and our new county manager is. They're a CAO. They're an operations officer. Their job is to operate the county. And so there's an important distinction there. And, and I think that's reflected in the group that's proposed is that this is a group that understands operations of the county. We have, again, you know, a two-term uh, county commissioner that, that knows the business climate in, in New Mexico and around the, the United States, frankly, in, in former Commissioner Cummins. Uh, in former Commissioner Hart-Stebbins, we have, uh, I believe, the, the longest tenured 
county commissioner and county history uh, has, a, has a pretty good understanding of how the county operates. In Miss uh, former President Montoya Cordova, we have somebody who just led a search process at APS, uh, a national search process at APS uh, on their board. An incredible record of service and, and somebody that knows about this. In the proposed chair, Mr. Mr. Juan V. Hill, uh, an esteemed, very well-known, uh, recognized county manager, a professional in this business of our own county and neighboring counties. Uh, and finally, in in uh, Miss, I, I, I'm very bad at the pronouncing Venice. the name, Venice, uh, we have somebody that understands behavioral health, which is arguably you know the most uh, acute and apparent issue that we're facing as a county right now, as a community and nationwide. And so having that kind of expertise on here is incredibly important to me. So to me, it's not about the geographic representation or the political representation on here. It's about making sure that we have people that know how to recruit a county manager and vet these candidates to help us make the best decision of who can carry forward on the great work of our county administrative team and take us into the, the next phase of, of Bernalillo County. And so uh, I very much support Madam Chair's resolution uh, and I, I don't think this amendment is helpful to the process. I think this really uh, inserts a, a very, it really politicizes the process far more and puts at risk what I think is, is a very much uh, a well thought out process that emphasizes the administrative qualifications of the new county manager being first and foremost and, and the most important thing is making sure that we have somebody that is excellent and well respected that's our job. It's not our job to insert politics into this, and, and I think that this is a very good resolution, and I'm, I'm going to support it without the amendment. Commissioner Barbola. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I just actually want to take the time to thank you. I know when we got the announcement that our county manager was going to be leaving us, I was a little worried because that's a big job, and hiring is a lot is a big thing to do um, on top of all the things we're trying to cover. So I just want to thank you for taking leadership for your due process. You emailed us immediately asking for input. Um, you were thoughtful. You received, I received the emails that gave us deadlines in order for which we, you asked us to respond and give input by. I was a little late, so I asked for an extension. Then I sent mine a few days later, was accepted. Um, and I just want to feel like, I feel like we all had access. So I thank you so much. I agree with um, Commissioner Quesada's, uh, Commissioner Olivas' statements about the importance of this being a well-rounded, ready to serve. I also want to note that, you know, if this was about, you know, Commissioner Quesada presented a resolution that looked for a search form as our first priority. So there wasn't a request then to have each commissioner um, nominate somebody for this selection process, um, rather it referred to a firm, um, which my experience in being a liaison to the deputy county manager of behavioral health has taken us over a year and a half to find a, a, pers a candidate. And um, also that firm hasn't actually worked out for us in the selection of a warden or otherwise. So I'm really excited about your leadership to make sure we have a local community that's qualified and, and that you've vetted them and that you've run it through our process. Thank you. Madam Thank you, and I would like to ask Mr. Juan V. Hill to come up if you have any questions for him. Uh, I asked Mr. V. Hill to, in a moment, Commissioner Benson, but um, to come and answer to the question of the timing on this. I think that we have all talked about the importance of expediting this process that June, the end of June is around the corner, uh, which is one of the reasons that I, I asked Mr. Vigil to, to serve because he's been in this role before. He understands um, both the process as well as um, moving forward. And so my, my personal privilege, Mr. Benson, is, is to ask him to just say a few words and then I'll call on you next. Uh, no, I'd like to have a vote on that because uh, this is open discussion. Uh, yeah. And I haven't had a chance to comment. Yeah. You don't have any say. There, there wasn't a second to the amendment, so I, I'm moving on to the discussion. So we can come back to the I'll amendment. I'll second that amendment. I, I, I'm okay. 
If you'll just wait a moment, Mr. Vigil, um, the amendment for uh, Mr. Quesada's motion Second. has been seconded. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? No. No. Thank I'd you. like to finish my discussion, please. Yeah, he gets discussion. Okay. According to the Robert Rules of Order. Please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and uh, Commissioner Case, uh, Olivas, I understand that your district is not represented, but you did appoint my uh, constituent. So the geography isn't as important. It's the voice on the commission. Um, I wasn't even actually aware of a hiring committee until your appointment called me to let me know. He was a former opponent of mine politically, even though we're not bringing politics into this. Um, we are now friends. He called me to let me know that there was a search committee that you had called him to be on. And I appreciated that uh, courtesy that, that my constituent gave me that I was not afforded by the commission. So uh, it sounds like you three who have selected this five-person committee are in line and you should vote that way. And it is, it's, uh, it's a joke to our constituents. It's a bad idea. Uh, we're not, this is a level uh, between the applicants and the commission. This is a, uh, a review board that gets to, to determine which applicants come before us and two commissioners have had zero say on who's on this board. I'd like to respond to that. Thank you. I um, Again, I say that the local committee that is being proposed here is not required by our charter. The commission has the full role of selection by majority vote of our county manager. I feel that what we're doing here is actually going above and beyond by doing this national search, by doing a vetting by very respected, knowledgeable people in the community that, that has been proposed. Yes, it's been proposed here. It's not geographical. It is about the breadth of knowledge, the experience, and what I think can help us. I think as, as I've been told, you know, doing actually the grunt work, the difficult work, but takes a lot of time, which this commission is not going to look through the hundreds of applications that perhaps we hope will come in. Human Resources and the legal department will be staffing this. They will send out the application. That will be um, gone through in terms of qualifications. The qualifications that you all have provided are included in this resolution. The skills and abilities that you would like to see has been included very specifically for this committee to use in their um, vetting. And then that will bring forward a list of qualified applicants, which will be posted on the Bronco County website of all applicants. And the top five recommended to the commission, which we will have the opportunity to interview personally. And I don't know about you, but when I have hired a, a, a high level position, I think that kind of a vetting process and bringing the, the top five to a in-person interview works. It's best practices. That works for our board. So you will have a voice. You will have the ultimate voice when we have these discussions and interviews and reviews. And that, and we will bring that back out to the public. So I feel that this resolution is actually quite thorough, even more so than what we are required to do by charter. So I, again, think that um, this is moving in a, in a deliberate but a quick pace so that we can accomplish the needed and very important job that we are charged with to hire a, a county manager. That, that is my thought process, sir, and it's not in any way trying to um, minimize the, the statements that you have made, or what, but we need to get moving, and this is, this is on the table for um, your, your amendment and your review and uh, vote tonight. I agree with everything you said except for the vetting process. And that's that's where that's the big hang up that 
two commissioners have had zero say. I wasn't even aware of a hiring committee until Commissioner Olivas's appointment called me to let me know that there was one. Five members? Why do we have five? Why not 20? Why not 10? Five? Is that because we've got five commissioners? Because we only have three commissioners making the decision on who is that vetting. Okay, so then they bring five in front of us, and then I finally have a say. After the vetting committee that the three of you have chosen, with giving zero voice to me, and I just want you to put yourself in those shoes. If you had found out by one of your constituents that I had called them and said, and then you read it in the newspaper, that the five had been selected, how would you feel? How would your constituents feel? Commissioner Benson, the purpose of the vetting and of the local committee is to have a uh, assistance from people who are in a position to recommend to us. I have some uh, ideas for that. And I was I, not given that voice. And so I, do I. If I might say that, I, Madam Chair, I think they were given that voice in the resolution that they wrote, which did not include a local selection process. If you were willing to have strangers from a firm that we don't know anybody of make this decision, and yet people that we can count on as reliable, reputable, you can have count experience, on. I've done this. Well, you were ready to rely on a firm. A, so, an so just objective third-party firm, not not former politicians that you can rely on. How would you feel? Commissioner Benson, I respectfully wish to move this forward. I feel that I've said my piece that we are going above and beyond what is actually necessary to vet and to choose and to, by majority rule, um, our next county manager. The last time that a county manager was chosen, who is Julie Morgus Baca, to your right, there was no search committee. Agreed. It was the members of the commission reaching out and determining and doing their um, acknowledgement and back and forth. And I'm not sure I wasn't there, but I know that that was the process. So this goes a step further to bring in uh, local advice from people who I trust in this community. I think that you would say you would trust Tim Cummins and, and Juan Vigil and some of these folks that we're talking about. And so I, I feel that we've done due diligence. Um, these are best, best practices. This process does follow best practices of the ICMA. They also have the ability to hire an outside firm, but how long will that take? And we have uh, a looming deadline of the commit uh, of the manager leaving. So with that, I, I just uh, Madam I, I feel Chair, very point of personal privilege. I feel strongly that we have done due diligence and just finished. I did send this out, and our county attorney asked for comments and suggestions um, a week ago, and I, I did not receive any back. Commissioner Quesada's resolution. Uh, was dropped when it went out to the public. So I am asking you to understand that this is this is an honest effort for good government and good review and a process that will be in the light of day. And we will ultimately be the five people at the table in those closed interviews that interviews the, the candidates. And if no one comes forward, just like APS did, you can do another search, but I'm hoping that we have expertise on this on this committee, I believe we do, that can help us find the right person to fill this very important job. So that's my position. Commissioner Casada. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I think that uh, uh, this commission has missed the point. Um, you know, I've hired a superintendent. As a matter of fact, I hired the best superintendent in the history of Albuquerque Public Schools. Um, this is not a first process for me. This is the first time I've never been felt like I was included, that, I've, that I'm not a part of a five-party commission, uh, and I think staff knows that that's the case here. And so with that being said, um, why am I here? There is no reason for me to be up here on this dais because I'm not being heard. Uh, I haven't been heard. I haven't been taken serious. I've done the work for, uh, I'm on my eighth year, and uh, you know, I can, I can represent 
my constituents better in my office than I can doing here. So I'm going to make a stand right now, and I'm going to leave this commission meeting because there is no purpose, there is no reason for uh, the commissioner and district two to be in this meeting because we're not included in any of the processes. No matter what they say, whoever, what they bring into these people and, and, and this committee is, with me not having a say-so means that all the people that voted for me does not have a voice right now when we're passing this resolution. So my time is better served in my commission, at my desk, in my office. Commissioner Quesada, I beg to differ. You have the opportunity to vote on the final uh, appointee, and I disagree with your um, statements. So thank you very much. I call the question. All yeah, those, we already voted. That was just for the oh, amendment. The amendment. So I call the question. Uh, it's been moved and seconded on the actual resolution as written. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. All those opposed? No. And I think Commissioner Quesada makes a valid point. Uh, two commissioners have absolutely been uh, pushed to the side in an effort to hire a county manager. No. Thank you, sir. That passes. Juan, would you like to say anything? Um, the only thing I'd like to say, Madam Chair, members of the commission, congratulations to Julie. Uh, she's done an admirable job for Bernalillo County. Uh, I admire her tremendously, and I really feel a deep-seated emotion about Bernalillo County. I spent uh, over 10 years here. I've been uh, county manager twice, <laughs> uh, back in the 70s and later in the 90s. And I have a deep feeling for this county, and I will do my best to bring forward the top qualified individuals who will best serve our constituents, who are really the reason we're here, mm -hmm. and who you all favor to do the best for you. And I'll, I'll do my best. Thank you very much. Thank you for your willingness to volunteer and serve. I really appreciate you. Thank you. So we move on to 8B, which is also a separate process. Um, is there a motion on the table for to consider this? Yes, I move. Is there a second? Seeing no second, that, that will not um, move forward. Item 8C, Netherwood Park Playground. Madam Chair, yes. to clarify the record, if we can start the renumbering, um, 8A was 43, moving on to 8C, and so on and so forth. So 8C will now be AR 2024 44? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And if we can complete the numbering for the remainder of the items okay. under um, eight. Madam, Madam Clerk. Okay, D1 will be 45. D4 will be 46. And D5 will be uh, 47. Thank you. One more on page four. I thought I did that, Julie. I don't see another. D5 is 47. Okay, we have 8A is 43, 8C is 44, D starting with 45, 46, 47, and 48. 48, okay. Thank you. But he's failed. Item C, Netherwood Park Playground. I so move. Matt, Madam County Manager. Yeah, yes. I'd like to, um, yeah, this is interesting. Well, so move. Okay. I won't say anything. I'm done. Never mind. I have a, a statement to make about this, um, Commissioner Benson. Um, being the former Parks and Recreation Director, 
I'm very familiar with Netherwood Park. It is an iconic park. It's like Roosevelt Park. It's one of the large, old parks in our community with the rolling hills. Um, we've heard from people tonight. We've heard from folks, as we know, on, online. And there is a lot of passion. And I can attest to the passion that people feel for their parks and how they feel so strongly about particular um, issues or um, natural play areas or, or just keeping it natural as, as, as it's built. And so I understand that, I, and I feel that the, the city does need to take into consideration all of those issues as they move forward on any kind of improvement and have a transparent process and include all of the neighborhood um, in their um, decision making. However, I cannot vote or second this because I do not feel that it's, it's in the position of this board of the county to be telling the city how to move forward on their neighborhood park, and the Parks and Recreation Department. And I don't feel uh, very, it, it is at all appropriate for the county commission to weigh in on this. So I'm hoping that the, the city of Albuquerque will um, work toward a uh, consensus building. I think that it, it has been very saddening to, to see that um, different sides of this community have, have uh, fought about something like this. And, and there's always a way, there's always hope, I think, to come to consensus. But uh, I cannot um, support this, this resolution. Um, Commissioner Olivas. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, it's unfortunate that the, the sponsor of this is not here because I, I had some questions for him, um, and I don't know if uh, I don't I don't know. Were you involved in drafting this at all, Commissioner? Okay, uh, because I you know so I guess I'll pose the questions to the to the chair, so to speak, not you, the the chair that's empty. Um, oh. <laughs> sorry. Uh, so you know, I'm wondering, was the City of Albuquerque Parks Department consulted at all in the in the drafting of this resolution? You know, Director Simon or you know any of the deputy directors and, and staff at the city because you know I'm guessing that they have the, the best and latest information on what's happening what's happening at the park and and you know what the plans are or aren't going forward. Um, but, but I don't I'm not gonna get an answer to that. The other question I have is was the city councilor for this area consulted uh, in this process? You know, did we talk to Councillor Feeblecorn about this, about you know her contacts with the neighborhood and you know her involvement in the community. This is not in my district, uh, but I've been to this park. This is a really cool park. I've you know when I was a kid, I went sledding on this hill that that they're talking about when it snows. You know that rare like one time a year that we get a snowstorm big enough to go snow on on the hill at, at Pregnant Park, uh, which is you know what it's what it's called. Um, this is a really unique park, and I'm just wondering if we consulted with the, you know, elected representative for that area. Uh, and I know that Commissioner Barboa is is the county representative, but of course, um, you know, we do not have jurisdiction over this. And that's another question I have: is is just sort of uh, what jurisdictional grounds are are we sort of intervening in this situation? Because um, I, I recall the situation a few months back with your quality board where the, the city council uh, crafted a resolution opposing the uh, HEEI regulation rulemaking process. And I think one of the criticisms at that time by community members and by board members of, the, of that board was that it was not the city's role to intervene in an active rulemaking process and that, it, that it's not affiliated with. You're, you're moving out of your jurisdiction and intervening in something that, that's not yours. This board, I think, wisely did not intervene in that. Um, you know, we, we took up a separate legal issue and process issue with the, the board itself and the ordinance changes, but we didn't intervene in the question at hand at that time, which was this, this rule. And that's really what I see this as, as a, a parallel, right? And, and look, you know, I, I don't live in this neighborhood. I don't know uh, exactly what's going on and who's involved, but I think it's really important that we listen uh, to everyone, including other area representatives and that sort of thing. And so another question I was gonna ask Commissioner Casada was about uh, the governor and just the legislative process, uh, because 
from the, the way the resolution is crafted, it's not clear to me that there is a, a good understanding of the legislative process and, and how a veto works. Because once an item is vetoed, whether you agree with it or disagree with it, uh, it's final. You know, even if the governor, if, if we pass this tonight and the governor gets this and looks at it, there's, there's nothing she can do, even if she says, gosh, I really messed up. I should, I should listen to this and change my mind. It, it's done. There is no going back on this now. There's next year, uh, that kind of thing. But I think a more productive use of our legislative time and our, our bully pulpit and our you know, authority, so to speak, is, is to work with the counselor in the area, work with the parks department, uh, collaborate and try to figure out how do we bring this community together uh, over these, you know, going back to kind of the, the statement I read in the very beginning, these perceived differences. I think all these people love their community. The folks that oppose this, the folks that support this, they love their park. They love their community. They love their families. They love their way of life. And their dispute is over a, a very small thing uh, that, that in the grander scheme of, of what we do is, is really very much not insignificant, but pretty close, right? And so I think we're spending, I've spent a lot of time here just now uh, asking questions that will not be answered uh, about something that I think is, is much, this effort's much better spent in this community trying to bridge those gaps, bring people together and talk about what is, what's an acceptable solution here where, where everybody feels uh, okay. Right? Maybe nobody's thrilled, nobody got exactly what they wanted, but I don't see this doing that. And you know, it's, I just think you know, we're not attaching any money to this. We're not a party to this process. We can't change anything. So I, I don't understand why we're inserting ourselves in an issue that I don't think we have any authority over and we don't have any business, frankly, being involved in this. Um, and if we want to get involved, I think that Commissioner Casada should reach out to Councillor Feeblecorn and work with her. And you know, maybe they can go up to the legislature next year and do some more lobbying and uh, talk to the governor and you know, make this happen in conjunction with the Parks Department so that this actually moves forward. Because even if this money was there, if this veto wouldn't have happened, there's no guarantee this would have moved forward. So we're, we're kind of making assumptions that if there was $200,000, we would have a playground. And that isn't necessarily the case because there is a parks planning process. Anyway, I've spent enough time on this. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Commissioner Barboa, then Commissioner Benson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, um, yeah, so this obviously, Commissioner Kazada was trying to present a resolution on an issue that directly impacts a neighborhood in my district. I think it's important that I um, share a few thoughts. Um, I'm for parks, open space, and playgrounds. Children need places to play and meet their neighbors. Family want places to take their kids and challenge themselves and burn some energy. Um, and I agree with all that's been said today that governing bodies that purview this issue does not include Bernalillo County Commission. This park is operated by the city of Albuquerque. The resolution, resolution has no practical teeth. Whether it passed tonight or did not would not mean that the playground would or would not be built. That is for the city of Albuquerque to decide. As a county commissioner that represents this overlapping district, I can ask and try and find resources to add to this playground should the city and county and the communities that live around that park decide that they want to or whatever improvements they may want. I can try and I would love to support um, what the city and the county decide for this neighborhood. And it is um, our partners at the city do great work in parks across the city. My county, my district is fully inside the city, so I go to neighborhood association meetings. I see them working together. I see counselors working to make sure that parks are have new equipment or updated. And, um, so I hope the city of Albuquerque and the community, the surrounding community of Netherwood Park, can come to an agreement on what they want for that park. As always, I'm help, happy to help in any way I can to make this community and more green spaces more accessible for our neighbors of all ages. Thank you so much. Mr. Benson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, commissioners, I still urge your support of this resolution. It's just an uh, administrative uh, resolution supporting the construction, not demanding it, just supporting it. We had, uh, it was the democratic process that worked um, and the veto is part of the democratic process that it was shut down. 
The veto happened because of a call from a former uh, politician. And that's that's the rub, and that's what rubs people wrong. As um, a former resident of a Vista del Norte community, we built parks with playgrounds in them for our kids, having four kids, and, and hearing the these uh, citizens come forward um, asking for this support. They've got young kids, and they had the majority support for it. Their senator had got the funds for it. It was all approved. This is just saying... We support this. It's a, a family building uh, move, and, and there's nothing wrong with it. The city could ignore us, but they typically don't. We, we've we set aside all of our opioid settlement funding for a joint committee. We've taken it out of the hands of operations in the county management. Record amounts of money, $150 million, taking it out of county management's authority, setting aside to work with the city. They accepted it. They had a super majority override the mayor's veto to remove the appointment of their air quality board. We fought that. That was none of our business. We fought it. We're now suing the city of Albuquerque. We are now suing the city of Albuquerque. This isn't saying let's sue the city of Albuquerque. This is saying, city of Albuquerque, we support this, please. So I, I urge your support for this. Thank you. Commissioner Benson, just, just a couple of clarifications. Um, we did have business entering into the um, a joint air quality control board discussion because it was a joint air quality control board. Those are their appointments. And, and, and they had supermajority on their appointments. We didn't care. Just to finish, we did have um, the appropriate authority to weigh into that issue. This issue really should be the city of Albuquerque, the Parks and Recreation Department, working with the community to determine the best uh, use playground, the best location, the best improvements. I'm telling you, $200,000 actually will not build a playground anymore. So it is, it's, it's really, um, we're, we're, the reason that we are passionate about this is because our constituents are passionate about it, as I started with, that, that we, we care about our parks and I leave it to the community and to the city because it is a city park to come together and come to consensus and, and work this through. So that's my position on that. Okay. This, this is just asking for support from the city, not demand. I am not hearing a second with, uh, so I believe it fails for lack of second. Madam Chair. Yes. We will need to go back and renumber. Both of those, B and C, have failed. So let's okay. go back to 8D1, which will now become 44. 8D3, which will now become 45. 8D4, which will be 46. 8D5 will be 47. Thank you, Madam Clerk. And now we move on to another very important, uh, one of our most important um, issues that we are responsible for working with staff, uh, the budget. Ms. DCM Reagan. Good evening, Madam Chair, uh, Commissioners. My name is Shirley Reagan, Deputy County Manager for Finance. And um, I'm here tonight to talk about the agenda item for the county's FY25-26 biannual budget, which is the culmination of a lot of hard work and commitment um, from the budget team led, up, led by uh, Jennifer Gallegos and Jackie Sanchez, the departments, the elected officials, the commissioners, the DCMs, and our county manager, Julie Morgan-Spaca. Um, I'm honored to have her present this agenda item because this is, since she's retiring, um, I wanted her to have that opportunity to talk about some of the things that she's done uh, before she ends her stellar, her stellar reign that she's had here uh, at the county. And I, so I respectfully ask that she come up and present the budget. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Vice Chair, Commissioners, and Shirley, thank you so much. 
So um, yes, I just want to present the FY2526 biennium budget. Um, everybody knows that it was a collaborative process starting in October of 2023. We had four workshops with the commissioners. We had uh, retreats with the county manager, myself, and the, the deputy county managers, with the directors. Um, a quick summary of the budget, um, of the FY25 budget is as follows. So the balanced budget is $1.2 billion. $442.3 million is general, fund, general reoccurring uh, budget. This includes 1.9 million in general fund sub funds, which is the PILT and community services. 319.9 million non-general fund budget and 407, I'm sorry, 407.7 million for multi-year projects that this is our carryover budgets. Um, the budget includes, we're asking for 35 new full-time regular positions. Uh, we, uh, we, we maintain our fiscal responsibility. We took into consideration um, the absorbed increase in costs. So this is the medical, the multi-line law enforcement and workers' compensation insurance premiums, the statutorium para contribution rate increases, and the contractual cost increases that everybody knows are happening. So several st strategic initiatives that I'm really happy to, to mention, and this is because of our commission. Um, the opioid joint strategic plan that we have, the su uh, sustainability plan, including the electric vehicles and more energy efficient buildings, the work day system. And this is, um, th uh, this is replacing a very antiquated HR system that consolidated Eight, uh, 11 applications into one. A lot of hard work from our staff. The Middle Rio Grande Housing Collaborative and the MDC Healthcare Authority. So our approach in preparing our budget was uh, from a long term perspective. Budget decisions based on strategic plan goals and objectives. And I want to mention that um, throughout all of this, we maintained a required general fund reserves. So as you know, we have our 25% DFA reserved, which we have adhered to and um, are, are, um, are still very, very stable. Our 5% self-imposed re revenue stabilization operating reserved. And we also have maintained our AAA ratings on general obligation bonds. So everybody, you all know how important that that is. This was an upgrade to our gross receipts tax revenue bonds. So our AA plus ratings reaffirmed on our gross, rece gross receipts tax bonds by Fitch and Standard and Poor's. Moody's upgraded county GRT revenue bonds from uh, AAA, I'm sorry, AA2 to AA1. So we've only gone up, we've done better because of course, because of your support and because our great staff. The budget incorporates funding for the FY25 market salary study, which I'd like to um, go over with you because this is very, very important. And I wanna thank you for your time in, uh, we met several times and um, we explained what we were trying to do and this was something, as the county manager, this was something that's very personal to me and very important to me. And that's acknowledging um, our number one resource, our most precious resource, and that's our county staff. Um, the county conducted a market salary study to support the FY25 budget. So you recall a couple of years ago, HR completed a massive overhaul of the county's job classification and pay structure. The work included streamlining and consolidating job classifications and taking a new look on how burnt co salaries compare to peer agencies. So in 2022, the budget allowed for a 3.5 to 5.5 cost of living adjustment and some one time $3,000 payouts for each employee. So now fast forward for t for to today. Two years later, we've conducted a more thorough market research. I asked our HR department to take a look at what each employee is doing. Um, how much experience do they have? What kind of education are they bringing? Um, you know, what, um, you know, 
is we're, we're, we're concentrating on that individual employee because that's really, really important. It's real personal. It's very, very personal to them. So we've conducted a more, a more uh, thorough market research looking at 16 cities and counties in the region. So again, this was one of uh, the top priorities for me uh, going to fiscal year 20, uh, 20, 2025 was to make our employee salaries more competitive and comparable to the city of Albuquerque and to the state of New Mexico and other cities and counties in our region. So HR cast the net really, really wide and we looked at everybody, but we are very, very, they were very reasonable. We weren't comparing ourselves to Sandia Labs. We know that we can't compete with them. So we wanted to be very thoughtful and we wanted to be very reasonable uh, about how uh, we approach this. Um, HR has spent many, many months evaluating each individual employee's experience and credentials to determine if a pay adjustment was warranted and how much that adjustment would be based on the individual employee and the market study analysis. The amount of the adjustment will vary depending on each individual. And I was talking about years of experience, certifications, um, you know, licensures, you know, everybody, every employee is very, very unique. And we really wanted to acknowledge that. So uh, fortunately, we were able to bring some of our employees uh, salaries closer to the market averages. Um, so, uh, so this time around, those employees who are close to the market, or we should say at market, there are approximately 170 of those employees, um, they would receive a $5,000 one-time time payout only, but not uh, an hourly, hourly salary adjustment like the other employees would be getting. And I want to emphasize that uh, the amount of adjustment will vary, you know, it's depending on, upon each individual. Um, and I want to highlight over a thousand employees were looked at. A thousand employees were looked at individually. Um, that was really important and took I'm just going to say, almost two years to do. So our union employees, I want to talk about them. Um, everybody uh, knows, or may or may not know, that they comprise 62% of our workforce. Um, that's of the county's 2,600 employees. They're 62% they would receive, and we are asking for uh, respectfully, a 10% 10, a 10 salary adjustment, but we need to respect um, the, the, the CBA. So this is in, in accordance with the CBA that we, and we will be working with the unions on what, that, what exactly that looks like. And this amount, that 10%, I want, to, uh, I want to also let you know that for executive leadership, they're not going to exceed that 10%. And um, we all only felt that that, that was right and just um, for all county staff. Um, so I just felt Burnco is a, an amazing place to work, providing competitive salaries for our employees. We know it reduces turnover and stabilizes operations that supports all the great work that we do for the community. And before, I mean, even if this, this didn't pass, I am 110% sure that these people behind me and those that couldn't attend the meeting, our staff, they're going to carry on and they're going to do the best job that they can do because without them, they're our foundation. They're the engine. They make things. I mean, I can make decisions and you all can, um, can vote on them. But without them, it doesn't happen. And I, and I know that. Um, I want to thank Bernadette Pettis, our HR director, the leader uh, uh, who helped with this in our HR department. I want to uh, thank uh, our county uh, staff in our HR department, our budget staff who worked really, really hard on this. And mostly, too, I want to thank you all for your time because we met a few times. You had a lot of questions. They were hard questions. Uh, you gave us some amazing, great suggestions, a lot of food for thought uh, before we came, to, before um, we were here tonight talking about this. So, uh, again, I just want to thank everybody. Um, and uh, so at this point, we've got like seven motions, Madam Chair. So I'd like to, to know how you'd like to proceed if you'd like to vote on each one of them. I know that number two 
was taken out, and that was the one moving the emergency communications department uh, uh, to the sheriff's office. So we took that out. Yes. And so would you like to vote on each individual motion? I can read them, or would you like to vote on all of them ex with the exception of number two? Um, County Manager, thank you so much, and thank you for that um, good uh, description about, about staff and the market salary, that, which is a, a big part of this budget, so I appreciate that. I think uh, for the benefit of the commission, we should just vote on them one at a time as planned um, uh, in case, you know, so that there is that discussion. We may be able to move through it. Um, there may be some uh, suggested changes, so uh, with that, I will move approval of... Uh, D1, which includes the salary uh, presentation. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, Commissioner Benson and then Commissioner Olivas. Thank you. Um, Madam Chair, I just want to thank uh, County Manager Baca for your leadership um, and, and point out the market salary study. The, I mean, we are service. That's what uh, Brentleo does is service. And if you don't have employees to provide that service, then we're doing our constituents a disservice. And uh, and for any organization, whether it's government or the private sector or nonprofit, um, one of the hardest things to manage in any organization is uh, employees uh, because they're people and, and nobody is the same. And you just do such an amazing job. And Thank you for fighting for uh, your uh, employees and the county and for everything you do. And I just want to uh, applaud you in this uh, entire entire project. Thank you. Commissioner Olivas. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Madam County Manager, I, I remember when we were sort of starting the budget process, one of my you know emails to you, um, I, I listed as my number one priority was you know just the overall staffing retention and recruitment and the importance of that investment and I feel like we we had a conversation or something in person and, and you you almost like winked at me or something and you were like we're we're gonna do something on this we'll, we'll make sure we do something and and then we never heard anything uh, until we we got into those uh, market research uh, study sessions and I just want to commend you for the the methodical approach that that your staff took to make this happen and do it in such a way that is you know I think look it, there's always issues with you know people feel like there's unfairness that kind of thing this is I think as clean as it gets as far as just trying to take a, a level-headed even-handed approach that's that's based on the employees credentials and licensures and tenure and uh, I just really want to commend you for coming through on that. And I think it's just an amazing legacy that, that you leave to all of us, the, the employees, the folks up here, and the folks out there, uh, and, and those that, that come after us, to uh, invest in our most valuable resource that we know is our, our biggest strength, but also our biggest challenge. Because when, they're, when you don't have the employees to do something, it's, it's a huge obstacle you know it, it, it's and so investing in our people is just so important and I want to thank you for that and thank you for making I, I want to thank Jennifer and Shirley for making this budget process um, so inclusive and you know we had all of these workshops that were just so helpful so educational to, to me and to all of us allowed us to work through so many problems and, and concerns and talk about initiatives and uh, you, you just did an outstanding job and I'm just grateful to, to be able to support this. Uh, Commissioner Barboa. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just quick also acknowledgement for your leadership. Thankful for this. So that I am just felt honored that I get to vote on this tonight. And um, to, to our team, Jennifer, Consuelo, Bernadette. I mean, I learned so much, such skilled folks with such thoroughness trying to do right by the county. So I am excited and thankful for your team and, and you. No further discussion. All those in favor of motion uh, D1. Aye. 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 Yes. And that passes. Um, a motion to approve the financial budget resolution D3. Any discussion or any presentation, Julie? Or 
Um, Madam Chair, Mr. Vice Chair, Commissioners, no, there's, I don't have anything further. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Aye. Thank you. Uh, motion to approve D4, financial budget resolution number three, establishing the county carryover budget multi-year projects. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. And that passes. Thank you. Item five, a motion to approve administrative resolution to support grants and projects from various sources, 25 and 26. Do I have a second? Second. second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And item six, um, I move approval of the 35 new full-time regular positions as detailed in attachment D. Is this this one? So moved, or second? It's been moved and seconded, and there's a discussion item of um, Commissioner Olivas. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I wanted to make a motion here for a floor amendment to this uh, now item six, uh, five uh, to change a couple of these positions. Um, I've been thinking a lot lately about uh, we've had these distinct and significant conversations about dispatch, and um, part of this budget does add a, uh, a lieutenant at BCSO to work in, in the dispatch center. I, I support that. I think that's an important uh, liaison. However, I think it's it's a little bit um, unfair that fire doesn't have the same type of uh, liaison there. And of course, you know we have a situation right now where where our fire chief is is certainly deeply involved in this. But you know I'm just thinking about making sure that we have that constant communication uh, that's going on there. So the amendment before you um, basically changes the, the uh, line item for a fire rescue lieutenant to a dispatch liaison lieutenant, just making it very clear that, that that's an important uh, position to make sure that fire is uh, equally represented in, in that um, facility. And the other part of this resolution is, is something that I you know have thought about quite a bit over the last few days and you know the positions that the, the that we've heard from our firefighters over the last year regarding uh, safety on our, on our trucks and in our crews. And I really wanted to make sure that we emphasized uh, the, the boots on the ground, so to speak. And so uh, this amendment would remove the fire rescue captain and the fire rescue division chief and shift those positions to add four uh, firefighters for our uh, four person truck pilot program, which, um, you know, I know that there's always trade-offs when these are, are made in, in the budget discussions, uh, but I think it's really important that, that we invest in that, that frontline safety personnel that, that are um, not only keeping the community safe, but keeping our um, crews safe, because having four people on a truck is, is frankly the, the national standard and something that I really want to see us move to a, as quickly as possible. So. Uh, I make a motion for the, the following changes. It will change the number of positions from 35 to 37 without a budget uh, increase. I think it's actually a slight decrease. It's about $8,000 less than uh, what was Second. previous. So there is an amendment on the floor and it's been seconded. Um, uh, Shirley, do you have a, so I'll open that for the, for the amendment. We'll open it for discussion. I just want a point of clarification on the, the oversight position, you called it a lieutenant, but that's typically a bargaining unit, so you're really wanting it a non-union position, the oversight for the emergency communications? Uh, no, it, it would still be the, the lieutenant rank, um, you know, I think, I, I, don't, Which, I don't know the, the, the well, details of that. The reason I'm asking, you had said you wanted it to represent fire and BCSO, so. No, no. just fire. Yeah. Just fire. Just fire, so okay, so in the fire ranks. Okay, I just want to make sure we get it located in the right place. And I, I give you, I, okay. I have another copy have of this a, here as well. Do you have a floor amendment there? Madam Chair. Uh, Commissioner Benson. Just to clarify, the BCSO um, has the lieutenant uh, position uh, at dispatch. This would be uh, reciprocal for the fire department. Right, yes. fire, right. Okay, I just wanted to make sure, because I, 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 I did misunderstand, so I wanted to make sure. Madam Chair, yes. Um, the, the I do second this. The um, four-person truck uh, unit 
is badly needed, uh, and I applaud the fire department for having operated with three. Um, it's uh, lean and mean, uh, but it's not the uh, national standard, and um, for for their safety as well as the public safety, uh, this is a needed position. So um, I agree. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I guess we are voting on an amendment to this motion first that changes it to this uh, to go along with the floor amendment, which has been put into the record. All those in favor of the amendment? Aye. Aye. Yes. Aye. Okay. That's approved. And so back to um, item six is is the, is the approval of this floor amendment, I guess. Do we need to do another vote on that, Julianne? I'm not clear. It says 30. Yes, it says 35. It'll now be 37. Yes, correct. Okay. And that it's in the record of what the changes are. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And um, that was already moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. As amended? Yes. Yes. Okay. As amended, yes. Thank you. Um, motion number seven, authorize the county manager. Um, I'll let you take it from there. Um, county manager, any, any discussion on that? Item seven. Uh, Madam Chair, no, not unless you have any questions. So uh, do I have a second? Second. 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 Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. 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 And then the final motion to authorize the county manager on this administrative uh, resolution. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, there you have it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, you have Madam approved Chair. budget. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention Consuelo Montoya and Alicia Lucero. There were the two ladies from HR that did an outstanding job, so I wanted to acknowledge them as well. So I can't thank you enough for your support. This really uh, means a lot, and it just, you know what? It's even going to make us better, I promise you. I mean, I don't even know that it was possible to be better, but, but it is. It is. So... Thank you so much for your support. We appreciate it. Thank you, County Manager and Deputy County Manager Reagan. Thank you so much for all of your work and, and leadership on, the, on your staff. And thank you all. Okay. So barreling through, we move on to approvals. Um, Chief of Government Affairs, Kathy Court, to present the Opioid Settlement Fund Strategic Plan Consultant. Hi, Madam Chair, um, Vice Chair, and Commissioners. So before you is a motion for approval of a memorandum of understanding between Bernalillo County, the City of Albuquerque, and Vital Strategies for the development of an opioid settlement fund strategic plan. Um, it also asks for, your, uh, for you to authorize the county manager to execute any subsequent amendments to the MOU. I might add that we don't anticipate any, though, because we do have um, City of Albuquerque, Vital Strategies, and our own county legal team have all uh, signed off on this MOU before you. And um, uh, this is a formalization of a process that has already begun. They've already issued an RFP to find a local consultant to help lead this work here in Albuquerque, Bernalillo County. And uh, we're meeting with them already on various aspects of their action plan. So I stand for any questions. Um, I want to move approval. Do I have a second? second. And it's been seconded by Commissioner Barbo. And I, I'm sure you have something to say, but I wanted to really quickly say how important this is and how important to, to move this forward, but also to do it right. And I know we have a schedule that we have set, but we the, the importance of that community outreach, as we've discussed with Vital Strategies, is, is key. So thank you, Ms. Court and Commissioner Barboa. I just wanted to say I'm so excited to vote for this um, this evening. I want to thank you, Ms. Kathy Court, for really, I know you're thorough, um, get stuff done, and we're seeing this thanks to your hard work and ethic. Um, I'm excited about Vital Strategies. We've gotten to meet with them. And I just want to invite everybody um, to the ABCDC meeting while they will on the, uh, this month on, no, on April 25th, I put August 25th on my piece of paper. On April 25th, um, Vital Strategies will be presenting their sort of outreach plan, how they plan to talk to stakeholders and gather the data and information needed to make solid decisions. Um, so everybody's invited to April 25th to hear that from Vital Strategies and our leadership <laughs> here and from the city. Thank you so much. Uh, Commissioner Olivas. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Ms. Court, for 
your great work here. I remember the, the first meeting we had, I guess it was last year, I don't even know when, with the county manager, yourself, myself, um, and I think Commissioner Barboa was, was there. Um, so we've, we've come a long way and just really thrilled that, that we were able to find somebody that is really qualified and really dedicated to this. And I mean, it's not that often that we have an RFP before us that uh, doesn't require us to expend any funds. So that's an added bonus here, a, a big added bonus, but they, they really aren't a, you know, a, a free organization, so to speak. They really bring a lot to the table. Uh, a lot of expertise, you know, and a national endowment behind them from Bloomberg Philanthropies and others. So, you know, I just want to commend your leadership and county manager for, for making this work. And uh, and I also want to give a shout out to, to DCM Cedillo White, who, you know, really started the work with this early on with Vital Strategies on the, the Fentanyl Awareness Keep NM Alive campaign with, with them. And this has blossomed into a, an even better relationship and just excited to see this move forward and, and aggressively, quickly. I like that about this plan. We, you know, I, I have a lot of concerns about, you know, plan, 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 but never act. And I, I really hope that we're in a position here where we can move aggressively. And, you know, with your leadership and, and the, uh, the contractor on board, I, I'm cautiously optimistic. So thank you. Any other comments? All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Passes. And finally, item 9B, finance, presented by Denise Benavides. Ms. Benavides. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the Commission. I'm Denise Benavides. I'm the Principal Financial Analyst for the Finance Division. You have a couple of motions in front of you. The first one is to approve $545,000 of ARPA funding for NI-04-7. This is District 4 Roads in accordance with the Expenditure Category 6.1 Revenue Replacement Provision of Government Services. The funding will enable Bernalillo County Operations and Maintenance Department to execute a contractual services agreement with the paving contractor to provide roadway resurfacing services for th three separate roadways within District 4 of Bernalillo County. This project will improve roadway services, which will provide a better quality of life for the West residents as well as driving surface for first responders that may need to access these roadways. This project is 81% funded for Commissioner Benson's um, ARPA district directive funding at his request, and the franchise fee revenue will fund the remainder. I stand for questions on that project. Any questions? Madam Mr. Chair. Benson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, no questions. I just want to say uh, thank you, Ms. Benavides and, and Public Works, uh, for helping select the roads. Uh, this, I think it costs a million dollars per mile for a full refurb. And so this, um, we're, we're spreading the love as much as we can. There's a lot of need, but um, this will do a lot of good work uh, in our community. So uh, thank you so much. And I urge your support, uh, colleagues. Was there a second? I'll second it. Did, did we? Motion. <laughs> thank you. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Okay, aye. 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 Thank you, Ms. Okay, the next motion um, is to approve $2.25 million of ARPA fund money for NI-04-8 public safety and general fleet in accordance with expenditure category 6.1 revenue replacement provision of government services. This funding will enable Bernalillo County Fleet and Maintenance um, Department to purchase approximately 35 vehicles in need of replacement with 80% of the funding for public safety re replacements, specifically for the Bernalillo County Sheriff's Office, Bernalillo County Fire and Rescue, Metropolitan Detention Center, and 20% of the funding for general county fleet replacements. Um, FFM has reviewed the fleet replacements list and identified these aged units for decommissioning and purchasing of new units, which will aid the aid in the countywide operations. I'll stand for questions. I just, uh, I, I move approval. Second. Uh, moved in second. And I just want to say this is this is a great use of our funds, and, and it's been explained to us very well by uh, staff, and, and I'm uh, very much in favor of this. I have a, uh, Commissioner Olivas. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just wanted to, to reiterate, uh, uh, it's kind of a question, but I know that we have a big deficit in our county fleet. I think it's been presented to us, I want to say, $8 million, $8 million something like that. Um, so just to confirm, this does go towards towards paying that down. So it's like one quarter of that need. 
Yes. That's that's a big investment and uh, and a really important investment in the basic services. So this is a great move. Great. Any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Aye. Thank you, Ms. Thank Benavides, you. for your great work. That brings us to 10. Announcement of the next commission meeting will be Tuesday, April 23rd, 5 p.m. here in the Ken Sanchez Commission chambers, and this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all.